In this video, we are going to learn about the mathematical description of projection operator value measurements, or POVMs for short. To understand this lecture, you will have to be familiar with matrices, projections, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, Hilbert spaces, and in their products. In quantum mechanics, the outcome of a measurement is random, and the measurement changes the state of the system. To construct a POVM measurement, we need an orthonormal basis in the Hilbert space that describes our quantum system. Each of these basis vectors can be associated with an outcome of a measurement, and the outcomes are both complementary, and the measurement covers all possible outcomes. For example, the vertical and horizontal polarization of a photon can be associated with two vectors that are orthogonal, and they form a basis, meaning any arbitrary polarization can be described as a linear combination of these states. In terms of measurements, this means that A, a device designed to detect horizontal polarization will never fire when a stream of vertically polarized photons are aimed at it, and vice versa. This means that the outcomes of these measurements are complementary. And B, a detector capable of distinguishing horizontal or vertical polarization will always detect one or the other, even if a photon with an arbitrary polarization is aimed at it. This means we covered all possible outcomes. Since the measurement changes the quantum system, we need an operator for each of these outcomes. If the system can be in finite number of distinct states, these operators will be matrices whose elements are complex numbers. The size of a matrix like this is n by n, where n is the number of outcomes a measurement could have. These matrices have to be projectors. The outcome of an experiment is only random the first time it's performed. After that, we get the same result over and over again, meaning it doesn't matter whether we perform the measurement only once or several times in a row, which is of course the definition of a projection. Let the matrix Mn be associated with the nth outcome of the measurement. If we measure an arbitrary state cat phi, the probability of us finding the system in the nth state can be calculated by using the following equation. Notice that the mn cat phi vector and its conjugate transpose both appear in this expression. Therefore, this is an inner product of that vector by itself, and thus the absolute value square of that vector. But what is this mn cat phi vector? Essentially, it's the cat phi projected onto a ray of the Hilbert space and that ray corresponds to the nth basis vector. The matrix Mn can be constructed as the matrix product of the nth basis vector with its conjugate transpose. Previously, we said we can calculate the probability as the absolute value square of the corresponding probability amplitude. We can arrive at this result by taking the equation calculating the probability plugging the projector matrices into it, and then expressing the phi vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors. We also mentioned that the measurement changes the measured system. The state after the measurement can also be calculated using the MN matrix. If we find the system in the nth state, then after the measurement, the state of the system will be a scalar multiple of MN cat phi. Notice that the norm factor contains the square root of the absolute value square of that very mn cat phi vector. This means that the state after the measurement will be the nth basis vector. Now in a well-designed measurement, we expect to find one and exactly one outcome. This means that if we take the probability of all possible n outcomes, their sum has to be one. But this has to hold for every possible cat phi state which means that this is actually a property of the MN matrices. In other words, if we take the sum of every MN matrix multiplied by its conjugate transpose, then we get an identity matrix. Naturally, there is more than one orthonormal basis in which we can express the cat phi vector. In some of these well-chosen bases, the cat phi vector could be one of the basis vectors, while in others, it might be a superposition of these basis vectors. So being in superposition is actually a relationship between the quantum system and the measurement, and not the property of the quantum system alone. 
One consequence of the measurement being a projection is that measuring a system introduces an irreversible change, at least in cases where the state really is changing. This is because projection matrices are not invertible, unless they are the identity matrix. The only situation in which the state is not changing is when the state is the very basis vector corresponding to the outcome of the measurement. In this case, the state vector is an eigenvector of the matrix. Another consequence is that some measurements cannot be done simultaneously. Generally speaking, the matrix product is not commutative, and uncertainty relations can often be derived from this fact. One such famous relationship is the position and momentum of a particle that cannot be measured simultaneously. But the same relationship is also true for any two measurements if the basis vectors of one can be expressed as a linear combination of the other, unless they are on the same projective ray, meaning we just change their order or multiply them with a unit length phasor. So this concludes our introduction to measurements. Here we have learned that each outcome of a measurement can be associated with a projection operator. The probability that we will find the system in the nth state can be calculated using the nth operator, and the same operator can be used to calculate the state after the measurement. Thanks for watching, goodbye.